Hi guys, so this will be um, some notes here on trapezoids. It's probably better if I'm in the other corner. Okay, so trapezoids um, are quadrilaterals um, that have exactly one pair of parallel sides. So um, our parallelograms had two pairs of parallel sides. Trapezoids are going to have exactly one pair of parallel sides. Um, there are the sides are labeled as legs or bases. The bases are the two sides that are parallel. So these arrows indicated that those two sides were parallel. Um, so those are our bases. And then the other two sides are called the legs. And then you have two sets of base angles, um, which is basically all the, all the angles are base angles, but the two that match up would be the two that go along the bottom base and the two that go along the top base. So those two match up and those two. Okay. Um, and then we do have a, a specific kind of trapezoid and that's a isosceles trapezoid. So just like an isosceles triangle, you're going to have two sides that are congruent. So here you have um, AB is congruent to CD. Those are your legs. So the legs of your isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Um, and so you have the two sides that are parallel and then the, those are your bases, um, and then your legs are congruent. So uh, it's an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid because it has one pair of parallel sides. And we call it isosceles because the two legs are congruent, just like an isosceles triangle. All right, um, and then our theorem here for um, isosceles tri trapezoids. Um, well, let's first go back up to a regular trapezoid. So if you have a just a regular old trapezoid, um, let's say it looks something like this. Um, let's say this angle was, so here's our two parallel lines. Let's say this was A, B, uh, and then this was, I don't know, th uh, 32. Okay. Um, the only property we're going to have for trapezoids is that the consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. So, um, here's your two bases. Okay, we'll call this C2. Okay. Um, so here's your two bases. So the two angles, um, that are consecutive, that are between the two bases, uh, would be A and 32. So those add up to 180. They're supplementary. So A plus 32 equals 180. So if you do minus 32 minus 32, we're going to get A equals 148. Okay. So then we could find that A was 148. Um, there's no way then to get over here and find C and D. We know that C plus D or C plus B is going to equal 180. But there's no way we can um, connect that 32 to the C or to the B. Okay, so when you have a regular trapezoid, all you can do is consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. All right, isosceles trapezoid, we can do a little bit more with our bases. So if we look at this theorem here, theorem 619. Uh, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, meaning if it's a trapezoid with two legs, the two legs are congruent, um, then each pair of base angles is congruent. Okay, so this, here's, again, here's one base. TP is one base. And then RA is another base. Okay, it's like a top and a bottom to the trapezoid. And each pair of base angles is congruent. So T and P is one pair of base angles along the bottom base. And then R and A is another pair along the top um, base. So we can say that angle T is congruent to angle P and angle R is congruent to angle A. That's what our theorem here, theorem 619, is telling us. Base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So problem one uh, gives us an example here. So they give us uh, 
quadrilateral CDEF. Uh, and that is an isosceles trapezoid, they're telling us, and the measure of angle C is 65, and we basically want to find the measure of the other three angles. Okay. Well, here's your parallel lines right here. That means here's a base, and here's a base. Okay, and as we just said, the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So C and F are the base angles along the bottom, so they're congruent. So this is going to be 65. And then we know the uh, consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. So we can do 180 minus 65, which is going to give us 115 for D. Okay. And then we know that these two base angles are congruent as well. So this is also going to be 115. Right. So we know the ones at the top are 115 and the one, two at the bottom are 65. 115, 115, 65, and 65. So base angles are congruent. Those are the ones along the top or the bottom. Um, and then the consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. Okay, in the diagram, PQRS uh, is an isosceles trap uh, trapezoid. <clears throat> Let me get rid of this. Okay, um, measure of angle R is 106. We want to find the measure of the other angles. So here's our two bases, right? The parallel lines are the two bases. So we know that P and S are congruent. So S is going to be 106. And then the consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. So 180 minus 106 is going to give us 74. So we know that Q is 74, and then Q is congruent to P. So P is also going to be 74. Okay, the consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. All right, problem two. Um, if it loads. All right. Uh, paper fans, uh, the second ring of the paper fan shown at the right consists of 20 congruent isosceles tri uh, trapezoids uh, that appear to form circles. Um, what are the measures of the base angles of the trapezoid? Okay. So, um, what they, and, and they go through each of these steps here, but um, what you have is a circle. A circle is 360 degrees around. They're telling us there's 20 different triangles here. So if we do 360 divided by 20, we get 18. That means, um, let's draw it out. I'm going to zoom in on it. This is the white triangle. Okay. Um, this right here is 18 degrees. And again, they got that because they did, uh, the circle is 360 degrees around. And that's being made out of 20 triangles. So 360 divided by 20 gives us 18. So this measure of angle one is 18. All right. Um, it tells us isosceles trapezoid. So um, this triangle, um, since it's iso or since the trapezoid is isosceles, we know that these, these two are going to be x and those two are going to be y. So we know this triangle has two base angles of x and one of 18 degrees. So we can do x plus x plus 18. The three angles of that triangle add up to 180. So that's going to be 2x plus 18 equals 180. If you subtract 18, we're going to get 2x equals 162. And you divide by 2, x is going to be 81. Okay, so we know that um, these two angles here are going to be 81 and 81. Okay, and then here you have a trapezoid, so we know that those two at the top are both going to be y. I told us it was isosceles. 
So here's our parallel lines. Here's one base, here's another base. We know that the consecutive angles between those bases are supplementary. So we can do um, 180 minus 81. That's going to give us 99. So we know the measure of those two angles up here are actually going to be 99 and 99. Okay. Which is what they got. So again, if we draw this out, kind of big. Here were your parallel sides. Okay, you did 180 minus 18 divided by 2, basically, and that gave you 81 and 81. And then we can just do 180 minus 81 to get 99 for our top base angles. Okay. Um, a fan like the one in problem 2 has 15 angles meeting in the center. What are the measure of the base angles of the trapezoid in its second ring? Okay, so that one, um, you would do the same thing again, except instead of dividing by um, 20, you would end up dividing by 15, right? So we would do 360 divided by 15. Okay, that's going to go in 24 uh, times. All right? So then you could do 180 minus 24. Right? Because one of those triangles in the middle, right? This is 24. So these would be your X and your X. So you do 180 minus 24 is going to be 156. And then you can divide by 2, and that's going to be 78. All right, so in our trapezoid here, if we zoom in, right, 78, 78. You can then do 180 minus 78. That's going to be 102. So then these angles here would be 102 and 102. Base angles between the, uh, I'm sorry, consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. Base angles are congruent and consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. Okay, and then we also know in an isosceles uh, trapezoid that the diagonals are congruent, just like with a rectangle. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals would be congruent. We're not doing the mid-segment uh, theorem right now. Um, and I think we get the kites. So that's good on the notes for trapezoids. Um, you really only have two properties you need to look at. The uh, consecutive angles between the bases are uh, supplementary. That's true for all trapezoids. And then if you have an isosceles trapezoid, you know that the base angles are congruent. Okay, we also have the extra one that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Um, but that one really doesn't come up a lot. Okay, so two things. Consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. Diagonals are, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in an isosceles trapezoid, base angles are congruent. Also, the diagonals are congruent too. Okay, so that's notes for trapezoids. We'll do a walkthrough screencast next.